Hi everyone, sorry I can't be live doing this. I am currently driving, well as of tomorrow morning, I'll be driving to Canberra. So I thought I would start um, this video with a pre-recorded and uh, and uh, get you guys moving on the Bird of Paradise bag from uh, by Anne Kuzia, which is um, a company called Crystals and More. It's an Australian company. Now, she has kits available with the clover bias, um, bias makers. She also has the, the clover <clears throat> fusible webbing. She ob obviously has the pattern. Um, I sell these mats. Uh, she also has the uh, vodkins, the two types that you can get them. I, um, and then I have also fusible bias tape uh, just a different brand, uh, a lot cheaper. It's a so easy one. And I also stock some vodkins and they're about $4.50 for two. So that's nice and cheap too. So um, the mats are uh, um, $30 and that's so you can see through them. Now I've already prepped this and all you need to do, sorry, you know how to make bias binding. I don't need to show you how to make bias binding. It's pretty damn easy. <laughs> chair was way too low so I'm going to move some of this away I have done steps on showing you on how to do bias binding but what I'll, what I'll do is I'll quickly yeah I'll quickly run through it with you um, now these uh, what you're going to need is an iron you're going to need your fabrics and you're going to need to cut these on the bias um, well you can cut them on the straight really because they don't need to be on the bias I suppose but um, it'll work nicer on the bias. I think I've done mine on the straight because by looking at that, it's on the straight. Um, now, basically, you cut as per requirements on the back of these. It'll tell you how big to cut the actual strips. And then you feed it through. And you need the tape. And you'll feed the tape through at the same time. Um, so obviously, well this is only a small one, so let me show you the small one, just to make my life easier. And put that back there. They do have destructions on how to use them, so it makes it life a little easier for you. Uh, bear with me. I'll do it. Don't ask me how much they are, I have no idea. Um, so this is... Um, the number nine, I think. No, number six. Oh no, number nine. All right. So these these tape, they have like a glue on one side, and then the paper on the other, so you can peel the paper off. Basically, you would put the fabric in here. You cut it as per the requirements. Put it in there, and it folds like that. It comes up, comes out on this side, this way up. You know, like that. Then you feed it through this one with the glue attached. Some of the glues come off this, and you feed through there, through that little hole. Let's see if it's uh, like a bit better. Get that bit through, and then down through under here. And to do that, you just use a pin. It's much easier with a pin, not your fingers, because it's very fine. So then you feed that through there, and as you're going, you use your iron, and it glues this down to your fabric at the same time because it'll come out at the same time so that's the basics of those um, we have done demos on that before so I don't really need to go through but I thought I'd do a very quick one for you without actually doing it with us so to speak once you've got your strips and in the pattern it actually um, tells you to use all different types of strips you can use different measurements or whatever you like um, you can use all four five four or five of these you can use three you can use whatever you like and then just make up strips so that you can cover the area and you're going to cover one way and then of course the other way so I've got lots of different things here none of them are ironed so they're all <laughs> completely crumpled up because they've been in a bag but that doesn't matter too much. What I am going to do is grab pins. Just a pack of pins. Uh, these are $6.60. Just a little pack of pins. Um, and that will help me hold them down. 
moving some of them out of the way. Okay, so first things first, you have underneath here, I've got my old, it's my old mat, I've got my um, old ironing mat because mine's all away on the way to Canberra, so I uh, can't use it. So you need an ironing mat, something that can take an iron. Then in the pattern, you'll have two bits of paper that you've got to join together, which I've done already. I've then pinned it to my mat. Then I've placed, this is my old mat from a different company, but I've placed that on top so that I can actually glue down without creating issues. Can't have issues. Issues are no fun. Then you need an iron. And of course, I would normally use a small mini iron, but um, again, packed away on its way to Canberra. So get your first one and you'll see underneath there's lines going each way. Use them as a guide um, and lay the first one on top. You can place a pin in either side. It's got the tape already off, the, the paper, but it's um, it's got the, uh, the glue there. So it just needs, oh, my iron's got to heat up. It's just got to use, got to get that glue going. I'm using a thin one so I can go straight on the line without going wonky. The idea is to keep it as straight as you possibly can. It does make it easier for later. No steam with this one. It is a steam free zone. I'm just going to pop that there. And so just in case you're forgetting, this is the pattern we're doing. This is the, um, the, uh, fab, um, the, uh, yeah, the picture of the pattern that we're doing, sorry. And crystals and more, there you go, on the back, okay? So once you've done that, then you can get, I'm only gonna use two colors. And I, you can use different lengths and widths and all that sort of stuff. So I, I'm gonna sort of go with the flow and just start by going, all right, so what thickness do I want next? And I like to stand when I do these things. So starting up this end, put my first one down. So I can take that pin out, pop that right next to it, not on top, you just want it right next to it. Nice and close. Just iron that on, nice and simple. There we go. Now, you can trim off your excess as long as you've gone past your design underneath. Let me get my scissors, probably packed away. They are, so I'm gonna use my big kahunas and I'll pop that over there. Okay, next one I'm just going to alternate colours because I've only got two colours. You can put them in any uh, way you like. So you can have them um, uh, red, yellow, orange, green, blue, whatever you like in any um, colour way that you like. So I'm just going to work one way. And because I've used a, a fabric that has, um, it's a, it's a barge yellow, it's a stripy barge yellow, the teak, it's got lots of colours in it. So I sort of thought, oh, well, I can probably cheat and just use two colours. Oh, that didn't quite stick down that end. So I'm just going to pick that up. And if the glue's not staying on, Going to grab a bit of it. This one's made not to get into. Hang on. If you're finding that the glue 
or I might not have even put oil on those, I might have run out. So if I've run out, or if you've run out, just grab your tape, okay, the starting point, and place it on top of here. Oops, nice. Cut it first, Michelle. Cut your length you want. Place it on there. Just pin it down, one end to the other. Just move it over a fraction, it's a little bit more centered. And I'm just gonna glue that down to the actual mat. because I didn't put it on the actual bias when I did it. So I'm gluing that down so that I can then take, oops a days, come on. Probably wait until it cools down, Michelle. Probably won't work that way. Hang on, let me try another way. Do it the other way, Michelle. Turn that over, place it on there. It'll glue better to the fabric than it will to the mat. The glue's not meant to stick to the mat, just so you know. It's, it's meant to stay, but not permanent. As long as I cover the length of the bag, the bag cut like the bag pattern, I'm good to go. I'm just fiddling with that glue at the end there. Now I'll try and take the paper off. Try this end. Here we go. Stays nicely this time. Amazing what happens when you follow instructions. Okay, so second one, or third one, I should say. Come on, in you go. is a thicker one. So let's just start by getting that down and ironed on. Now then I'm going to get a really thin bit of black. I know this has got glue on it so I'm good to go. So just make sure you've got pins on either side. I probably need two lots of pins because all my pins are gone. Just putting that out there. <laughs> all right, that holds the babies in place. And just try and keep them as straight as you possibly can. I mean, I mean we're all human. I mean, if it's not completely straight, it's... Just do the best you can. All right, so my next color is going to be this one. And again, I could use that one, that's too wide. I'm gonna use a different width. Um, just gotta find the end of it. There it is. Cause I don't want them to be, you know, same each end, so each one. So like small, big, small, big. I want them to be different sizes each time.
So I'm just following the lines that are on the pattern that Anne's already given me. And that's keeping me nice and straight. Does pay to have the pattern. Very much so. Um, and just so you know, um, I won't be giving you measurements or anything because it is a pattern that is owned by Anne and um, the copyright is hers and I wouldn't, wouldn't do that to her. So you'll need to buy the actual pattern which is called Bird of Paradise. It is on the um, website of crystalsandmore.com.au so you'll be able to go in there and grab that pattern. It's only about 12 bucks or so. It's not that expensive. Place that on the top of that. Only because I didn't have the wide tape at the time when I was doing them. And I haven't done this. So I'm going to do it at the same time as I do the video. that there again get a pin on either end won't hurt your mat if you go past the mat like as to the right to the edge of the mat I mean you're gonna have a little bit of waste but you could then clip clip them instead of pinning through your mat if you didn't want to pin through your mat that one all right I might do a couple this side might do a, another thicker black one actually I just had one here that should do it nicely Again, just iron that on down the centre of your, your bias if you haven't already done so. You know what I'm like, I never do anything easy. Well, I, I don't do it the easy way. I try and find the, the easy way and I always end up doing the hard way. Oops, it is. got some glue that'll be enough so that's going to go that side just like that a pin in either end and what's going to happen is you're basically creating your own fabric from scratch so we're going this way and with all that glue it's going to be nice and firm and with all the layers because you've got the, the double layer. That'll go a real nice thin one. Outside the pattern, Oops, I always have my foot on the cord. All right. 
Alrighty, it's nice. Nikes. Okay, so let's use a thicker grey one. Yours. Beauty. Just make sure you don't have your cutting mat or anything underneath all this because you certainly don't want your cutting mat under there. There's another one. Just go on outside that. There's my glue end. That there. So as long as it's outside of that pattern, I'm good to go. And before you ask me, no, I don't have any more of this <laughs> Vargello fabric <clears throat> in stock. It is all gone. Do you love the grey though? Different widths thin. Uh, you can see I've sewn I've sewn them together to join them. Just cut that off. And that one's already got glue on it, so I can just iron that down. black one, use a skinny black one. That'll just reach. Ouch, that's hot, little booger. And then we need one of these. Does it have glue? Yes, it does. one over there. Pop some pins in in a minute.
Now you are going to want these pinned down, trust me on that. If you don't, later on it's going to drive you nutty. Alright, so that's a different thickness again. Where's the end of it? That one there. Bit of fluff. There's actually a join in that. I'm going to trim that off. I can go on the edge somewhere. that already in. Why are you fighting me? That's because it's already in. So far, so good and very easy. Um, and the instructions are actually really quite easy to follow as well. Um, very layman, layman terms, which is great. Love that. Um, I'm very layman-ish, so <laughs> that worked a treat for me. But I know that a lot of people are visual, so seeing it done um, will help in the long run. Not quite long enough yet. Need another batch of pins. Let's grab them. These are actually quite long, which is great. So I'm enjoying these. Easy to see and grab. And, oh, I've already done that. I'm very efficient. All right, next bit, I might grab some small ones. I thought I had a. Yeah. This has still got some paper on it. I'll just take that off.
set the sign. No, it's not. So we can pop. No, we can. We can pop that one there. Mr. P. Next side, we want to pop a little one there. Then we want a little wider one. Oh, yep, it's got a bit of tape on it too. Yep, the whole way. That's good. That can go there. Good, we don't need to trim off at either end. Come on, in you go. Mm -mm. Um, all right, I don't have much of a wide black one, too many bits, so we'll hold off on that. Go the other way, I've got plenty of bits, so we'll pop that one there. down here trim off Okay, so we use this one. Oopsie days, I turned it up. And that little one down there that covers that corner. I'm going to pin them down though. And 
then on this side I'm going to do this one I think I'm not sure if it's got enough glue on it, but it'll give it a burl. Seems to be all good. And I think that's going to be that one. There it is. Enough to cover that corner, and I'll chuck that one in there. And we then do one. Okay, let me stick to that. Okay, so we've got that all done and it looks pretty damn amazing. Loving the look. All right, I'm just going to move my iron out of the way for a second. Um, the next step is that we need to take focus on where these lines are, where they belong to, and we're going to be coming through these, and this is where you need your bodkin. So um, I'm just going to use these. These are cheapy ones. I like them. Cheap is good. Okay, so with these, come on, Jeremy, come. There we go. That that little round thing slides down. It lets you open that up a bit, and you grab your first piece. <clears throat> Um, I do need to put some glue on the back of this one and I'll give that a bit of a press first. Just make sure it can do the whole length of what you need. So I want it to go on that line to that line. So it needs to be that long. So I'm going to put some glue on that because I didn't do it earlier. Make sure the glue stays on the fabric. They do have a tendency to come off. Okay, so what's it is? Um, so what you do is you place that in between there, like so. Pretty easy. Pull that little doodara up, and that holds it steady. Now um, I've chose this one, so I'm gonna. You can you can choose go under or over. Uh, you can start in the center if you wanted to. I'm going to start um, probably around about here. Just lift one up. And that's why you have them pinned. Take that pin out, pop it over there. So one up. one and just feed it through because you're weaving side of it so that, that. Right. pull them through hopefully the pins will hold them tight enough and pull it through a little bit give yourself a bit of elbow room just lift that up slide it under Lift that up, glide it under, and you just keep repeating 
all the way across. Aren't you happy you, you pinned every edge of those? So if they come undone, like as in loose, don't stress because you've got a chance to then, you know, straighten them up and all that sort of jazz. So we just pull that through a little bit more. So under and over. And these little bits will be a little bit tricky to just lift under and over, so I'll probably just lift them up so that's under, oh, that can stay there. This one, sorry, that's over, so that goes under and down, back in place, that's over, that's under. That's where it's got to line up to. I'll take out that for now. And that one, because the pin's going to be in the way, and we'll just line it up over there. So we just scooch her along, a little bit of a wiggle, and pull that little circle thing down, right down to the as far as you can. Um, and it goes, that black one goes over the top, and that goes out there. Along that line, can now pin that down, go back over here, put that down there, re-straighten, tweak it a little where you need to, re-pin, push them around, make sure she's straight, it's as straight as I'm going to get it, get your iron. And now put your iron over it. But just be careful not to move the fabric. I nearly moved it then, so just sort of just press, not iron it. Okay. Then the next one is a black one. So again, you just clip that on the end like that. Pin it like. Eh, eh. Booger up, squeeze that tight, get that up there, bit of a clamp on it, push that ring thing up, then it's not going anywhere. And so I've gone under the black, so uh, and over the over the blue, so I'm going to go over the black and under the blue, and just go next to it. So just need to pick that up. under the blue and over the black. And this one's gonna go right next to where I want it to go. The one I just did. And all I'm gonna do is pull that up to as far as it'll go and just pin it in place. over under I've actually shorten up it's really annoying You could do a couple at a time, whatever you feel comfortable with. Over, under, over, under. Sleeve is catching things.
and then just pull it through. Make sure the fabric's facing the right way. <laughs> one started to move and just squish, squish it over right next to the one you just did. Um, I'm just sort of having a look in the camera. I can't really see very well. Just wondering whether I should have done it the other way, but eh, we'll just keep going now. She looks fine. Because I'm not using any other different colours, I probably should have gone the other way, but that's alright. I'll be happy either way. Find it over. Oh, hang on. Hang on. A bit excited there. I might actually just change that, you know. I just might change that. I might swap it around. So go under that. Hang on. Over. Under. Yeah. Be changing. That means I can change that one. All right. Let me do that right now. That's easy for that one. Not so easy for this one because I've ironed it down. That's all right. Get it away. I'll go from the center. Loosen her up. And then we go over the black and under the blue. Was defeating the purpose so there you go there's a lesson learned um, if you're using two colors not just three or four then you need to watch how you do that Again, so we're going to go over the black and under the blue. It needs to go right there. Okay, try that. At least it's easy to get undone when you need to. So over the black, under the blue. Under, over, under. Over, under. Over, under. Oi. Stop grabbing me top. Like I say, don't stress too much if things sort of move around. You can re-scooch them back into position. I'm just going to stand up because it's hurting my shoulders. My shoulder. Alright, so we got to that point. And I know that's my starting point that's in line. So I just need to move the things out of the way. Over. Under. Just re scooch it around. Should be fine. Okay. 
Oh, let's go get the sticker one. And pull that up a little bit. So let's pull at the end of it. So we want to go under the black and over the blue. So the opposite to what we just did. Let's pull that along, get it pinned down so it's in place. black, over, over, under. Over, under, over. Reminds me of being at school, weeding the wool. So this will take you a bit longer, just FYI, see fabric starting to move like it was starting to move there, just, you know, go up and repin it or something. Over, under, and over, and then it's pretty much off the, the design, so I can leave it at that. And just pin that there. Just make sure they're nice and tight, get rid of the gaps before I go ironing it. That's not too bad. Okay, so then just pop your iron on. Helps to reset everything. And get another black one on the other side. Don't measure it this time. Just hook it into that bodkin. Got to go under the black, so we're going to go there, over the blue. Under the black, over the blue. Under, over, under, over. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So if you notice, I'm just sort of getting it through three or four. Is that right? Over, under. Yeah, yeah. Over the blue, under the black. Um, just so I can, um, I don't know, just get a couple done. And before I iron it, I'll just give it another press. Straighten it up beforehand, I should say. Just make sure it's all nice. Over, under. And when you get to these little bits at the end, they get a little bit fiddly. Noticed? Just be patient with them. And 
release that. Put that back there. And over. Get rid of that one. This is where you just straighten a few things up, make sure she's good to go, and give her a quick press. And then we can do another blue. One, we'll do a small one and we want that one over here and the blue one we want it to go under the blue so starting there so pop it under that last one pin it down get your little bodkin thing going on at the end there. Alright. So over the black under the blue. And like I say, if this starts coming up, don't stress over it too much because it's quite easy just to lift it up and just drag it through. Do you know what I mean? Um, what you don't want is all them coming off. And then just straighten that one out. Give it a bit of a, a shove. So this will be up on YouTube as well, um, and I will pop some links into um, the description in YouTube for Crystals and More Pattern. Um, and the Bodkins. And the mats. Alright. And like I say again with that one at the end, it's gonna go under. So just lift it up and pop it under. Pull it over to the side. Pin her down, release the bodkin, a bit of a chicken scratch to get it nice and straight, give it the, the eyeball and see if you're going alright, and the press. Do that one. It's got glue, yes it has. Glue is good. And this will go over. So I will place that there. And it'll go under the black, over the blue. So I'm just gonna lift that one rather than try and thread it. And same with this one, it's much smaller. Over, and you could you could keep going like that. You can just lift like that. 
should get in a little bit. It's a bit easier to use a bodkin. So over under. So the lovely people at um, Crystals and More have all the products you need to make this to sell. Uh, I'm not sure if they have the mats, but I have the mats, so I'll pop that link up as well. Um, and there we go, so we can just lift now. And um, yeah, so that'll make it very easy for you to find all the things you need to do this little project and many more she has so many and they also sell oh, let's go first we put a put that there they also sell Shirovskis and all sorts of um, crystally type things like the um, hot hot glue crystals hot fix I think they're called Right. That's looking good. Alrighty. Next one. I can use probably another big one. And I'll have a quick press before I go any further with it. Just looking a bit ratty from being in that bag. Um, I'm going to finish up for very soon um, because I do need to do a live video on Facebook um, but there will be parts two, three and more and uh, they will come and you will see the rest of this getting done. But that gives you a good hour and uh, you can see how quick it comes together. As, as a weaving project and like I say if you've got more than one or two colors like I've got more than I've only got the two colors but if you've got more than two colors then you'll get um, a different look again to what I have um, so I'm going to go the blue so I need to go over the bike there and under the blue there under, over, over the black, under the blue, well it's really a grey, grey blue, but it's pretty, it's nice. Alright, so I'm getting a little bit higher up in the pattern, I'll put the bodkin in a minute, just means I'm not moving so much stuff. Oh yeah, no, I did check that. So, under the blue, grey, grey blue, whatever you want to call it, fuzz yellow, do a little wiggle. Worst case scenario is one of these comes up out of the pin, and if that happens, you just Quickly place it back, nice and easy. So, just going to go under, pick that up, and I'm at the edge of the bag, yeah, and here I am, I can pretty much cut that off about there, 
Lift that up. Come on, Johnny. There you go. Over that one. Put it down. Come back in place. Make sure she's all scooched over. Nice and easy. And there's the next one. How cool is that? That is looking really cool. I like you. Um, I like you a lot. <laughs> So we'll get going for now, but thank you for joining me. Um, we'll go, in part two will be continuation of this, and that'll be next month. But so far, um, you can see how cool that is. It creates um, a really interesting texture. I'm sort of liking it. I don't know why. <laughs> it's very beautiful. So, um, I might even have some extra colours, maybe just to throw through here. But there you go. So that's the bag there. It's called Bird of Paradise. Uh, Multi-width tape bag. Meshwork pattern by Anne uh, Kuzia from Crystals and More. Uh, that's uh, copywriter 2014. And she has a phone number on the back of the pattern if you need any extra help. Or you can always contact me. But um, leftover fabrics are perfectly, uh, perfectly okay. You could use um, lots of different um, colours and whatever you like. Uh, me, I'm a pretty bland person, so I'm going with the blues and greys and uh, the blacks. So um, we'll continue on with part two sh uh, so uh, shortly, in about a month's time, and, uh, and see how we go from there. So thank you for joining me for part one. I appreciate your time, and I like what I've created in the first hour. We'll see you soon. Bye.